Just like you, I too want to be a man of destiny. And in order to do that, I figure I need to build the biggest army of tiny scale plastic robots that has ever existed. And part of that is collecting some small scale plastic robots from the fantastic Mobile Suit Gundam Stardust Memory. Wailing solos, traditional animation, over-designed, ridiculous robots. It was 80s mecha anime at its finest. 80s mecha anime from 1991. What can I say? The designs of the mobile suits and the mecha and the Gundams from Stardust Memory are incredible. And they look even better in that classic old school animation. It is sheer perfection. However, sadly, the best aspect of Gundam, being the models themselves, kind of fail when it comes to that series. I've tried the Master Grades. They're so old, they really do not hold up. Some people love them, but I can't. I built one, and even though I have the rest, I don't know about that. But real great, they can't fail you, right? Nowadays when you see that RG on a Gundam package, it means you're getting the best Gunpla around. But when the Zephyranthus and the Full Burner came out, those things turned out to be, well, Pam-sized desktop frag grenades. These things shed parts more than my dog's shed hair, and I've got these tiny little dog hair tumbleweeds just blown around my house. That and they've got early real grade syndrome, they just don't hold together. As for the high grades, they're about 23, nearly 24 years old, so I don't have much hope there. So if I want some awesome, plastic, displayable Stardust memory, well, what do I do? Hmm. It's like one of my Japanese animes. Introducing the robot spirits, Ver Anime. Now these right here are some of the greatest figures around. I haven't tried these ones particularly, but I've collected a few so far, and every time I do, they're just so, so cool. But basically, they're just like your standard robot Damashi, except they've added a lot more articulation, some over-the-top effects, and they're fully loaded little figures that should do everything that you saw in the anime itself. So I've got three of these today. It's not the full lineup of Stardust Memory mobile suits, but it is a couple and it'll be nice to see. First off, I've got the GPO-1FB and the Gundam GPO-2A. Both of those I got off of Mercari on Bai, which I got all of this from, so they are pre-owned. And recently I just got the Gundam GPO-4G Gerbera. That is a mobile suit variation, as in it wasn't an actual star dust memory, but it's one killer design. Sadly, I do not have the stamen just yet. And believe it or not, this crazy thing right here, the XAML, there's one of those as well, if you are feeling crazy. So let's check these out and see if these do actually feel like one of your Japanese animes. So starting right out with the Gundam GP-01. Now this is the GP-01 FB, the full burner. The standard version is available from this line as well. Once you get it out of the box, this is exactly what it looks like. And this is incredibly detailed. This is a very, very nice figure. All of the various little thrusters all over this unit, the little verniers on the shoulders, backpack, they are all here. This is a Gundam with a lot of thrust and it is all represented. We've got painted inners to a lot of those, so they are red. We've got a lot of nice gray sections coming from the inner frame inside. Not that there is an inner frame, but the actual frame of the Gundam in universe. The detailing is all beautiful, but if you come from a model kit or building place, you might be like, well, this could do with a little bit of lining. I'm not sure why figure manufacturers never actually line up their kits to kind of break up the white sections. Maybe some people like it, some people don't, and that's why. But the white could look a little bit more dynamic. So this right here is what it looks like in the hand. So it, I'll do a size comparison very soon, but it is in and around the size of a high-grade Gundam. It is made predominantly out of a shiny plastic. Some segments are painted like those intersections of the verniers there in red. The eyes look like they are painted too in a kind of almost metallic green that does catch the light ever so nicely. There is some black lines in the Gundam muzzle right there, which is nice. The yellow section there on the chest, that V seems to be painted too. These are in plastic and overall the detailing is very nice. The gray sections from underneath coming through in that cool GP01 kind of way. So looking really nice. Of course, if you do want something that looks ridiculous, then the real grade is a good choice, but I will mention looks are its strongest aspect because it is stricken with the early real grade syndrome. 
So when it does come to a size comparison, the GP01 is 18 and a half meters in universe, which is around the size of a normal Gundam. If we throw down a high grade like the Oryx MT82 Beyond Global right there, you can see it is a decent bit bigger. There's another high grade from another universe being the high grade freedom. So as you can see scale wise, it's in and around the size of a high grade, but a little bit bigger. There's a high grade from a more recent series that is the high grade Gundam Ariel and also from the Witch for Mercury, the Daryl Balder. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, when it comes to the aesthetics, there's the full 360 spin, so you can see every angle of it for yourself. And to me, I feel like Bandai slightly, slightly missed the mark when it came to the absolutely kick-ass aesthetic that Stardust Memory had. Like, if you just throw up the art of what the GP01 looked like beside it, it just isn't as over-the-top and awesome. This may definitely may be a little bit more akin to what we see in the actual anime as opposed to this art, but it does look good, but it's been given a little bit of a generic Gundam makeover, in my opinion, compared to what I would have liked to have seen. But again, the beauty here is subjective. So when it does come to the articulation on these particular figures, Bandai to machinations does say that they are over the top and ridiculous, so you can get all the poses you want. First off, when it comes to the shake test, nothing is loose, thankfully. It all feels good and solid. And like I mentioned, this is pre-owned, so I assume that it was posed at least a couple of times before. So throwing the GP01FB into the usual pose to test every joint at once, and this is a little bit underwhelming. It's not really the ver anime that I've seen in some figures before, where they've got ridiculous articulation. Now this is super limited down at the legs. There is no upwards movement at the toe or the feet or any kind of pivot whatsoever, which does limit the lunges, so it can't get any further down than this. There are definitely a lot of nice moving aspects in here. We do have some nice moving hatch pieces in the front of the leg armor, everything moves around nicely, we've got some moving segments on the sides of the torso to allow the arms to move forward a little bit more, but overall it does fail a little bit. I did have a couple of parts of armor popping off on ball joints, that being down at the feet, as well as the side skirting armors. We do have some great articulation at the neck and the boosters around back, but overall it does feel a little bit limited. So it does come to the accessories inside of this box, there is quite a bit, it's well like these Robotomashi boxes are, it's very small, but what they pack in here is incredible. We've got so many effect parts to display this in a lot of ways we would have seen in the anime. Now this is more of a showcase of these kits as opposed to a full in-depth review, so I'm just going to go through them fairly quickly and get this into a kind of cool pose. Something worth displaying. So I will mention this is a figure right here that does not come with an included stand. So if you're looking for one, I always recommend the simple sand. I nearly said sand. Sandwich? Simple sandwich. The simple stand from Good Smile Company because it gets the job done and a three pack of them is only around 12 euro or dollars, which is amazing. It means you can outfit pretty much all your figures with them at a very, very low price. And they're ridiculously good for smaller scale figures and high grade Gumpla. Real great too. So we do have some cool options in here. First off, you're able to pop out the chest vents just like this right here. And this kit does come with an optional pair which attach on the exact same way they came off. And this is with the verniers pointing out like so. So getting this loaded up with the equipment, first off in here we've got the beam rifle. Once again, very nice. Purple painted in there for this sight. This does have a whole bunch of moving parts including the lower handle right here, the sight itself, and this does have a cool removable magazine or e-cap. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to be popping it into the hand because this is not the weapon I'm going to be using, but it does have that cool kind of beam bayonet thing as well if you want to pop that in just like so. So that is an option in here too. Seeing as I'm not going to be actually using the rifle in the hand of this particular Gundam, I'm going to be storing it. We do have some cool storage option, singular here. That is you just pop open this section around back, We've got a little adapter referred to as the rifle holder. You just pop the rifle into that like so. It locks in perfectly. And this has a 3mm peg that attaches into the butt just like so and holds on absolutely perfectly. The next piece of equipment we have for the full burner right here is the shield. This does have a sliding mechanism which allows it to open up and go smaller for storage. The handle around back doesn't move. It's set in place and we do have a ball joint right here. Socket. We've got three things to attach onto the back of that. That's the little segment here that attaches into the ball joint hole. That's for attaching it onto the arm. And we can attach onto E caps as well. Now, one thing I did miss straight away is just like we have those verniers for using with the chest, we also have ones that come out of the shoulder. These just swap in 
part for part, just like so, to get some more vernierage up on the shoulders. So next up, when it does come to hands in here, we do have a whole host of hands for pretty much anything that you'd want. Relaxed widespread, widespread, various different types in here. Holding hands for all the weapons, but seeing as I'm just gonna go for the one pose with the loadout in this video so I can get onto the other ones too, I'm gonna opt for this one right here. I was thinking of the other widespread one, but I prefer the more relaxed widespread one right here for now. Actually, I can't decide between the two at all. Now I'm just going to use that in combination with the shield. I assume the shield will be able to hold itself up. And there it is attached. So this can hold itself up fine. I could just pop the hand kind of around it like so. So have the option of popping the hand off later if, or should I say the shield off later and still having a hand that looks posed beside it. The shield does kind of clash with the shoulder a little bit. So it's going to have to go a little something like that. So this majorly cool effect part right here is one of the reasons I want to set this in a particular kind of pose and definitely one of the things that stands out about the Ver anime. This is basically a beam saber clashing effect part. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to use it with the GPO too. First off, I thought these things up on the shoulders were the actual beam sabers, so I pulled it out. But then I eventually realized, no, these are for attaching the beam sabers onto when they're stored on the backpack. The actual beam saber looks like this. One thing these Ver anime figures have is tons of effects. So when it comes to the beam sabers, we don't have that usual gumpla flat piece of plastic. What we've got is some cool, rigorous effects. And by <laughs> rigorous, I mean vigorous. So first off, we've got a normal beam saber blade, normal by Ver anime standards. It's a cool, gushing energy beam saber. We've got two of these, so if you want to dual wield, you can use these ones. Then we've got this version here, which is a little bit longer. There is only one of these in the pack. And finally, then we've got this ridiculously cool curved beam for slashing poses. Now, this one is absolutely cool, but I want to use that cool clashing beam saber effect part between this and the GP02. So that means I'm going to be getting rid of that curved beam in exchange for the standard normal smaller beam. So it actually turns out that bigger beam that I put in that I thought was a beam saber beam actually turns out to be for using with the beam rifle. So we're going to be revisiting that temporarily. So yeah, that big beam that I said was going into the beam saber, that in fact is actually for using with the beam rifle. Attaching that large beam into it is just as simple as a, well, beam saber. You just pop it in the end like so for a shooting effect. To enhance this, you can attach on this little bit of a muzzle flash aspect too for this big long shot. And that is not it. There are so many options when it comes to effects in here. We also have this smaller but wider muzzle flash and subsequently another bigger wider muzzle flash segment for on top of that for this big transparent pink blast. That's pretty cool. So if you're opting for the beam rifle, lots of options. So if you are super eagle-eyed, you might have noticed that every vernier on this particular figure has a little bit of a tiny hole in it. Whether it's on the chest, up on the shoulders there, even the little thrusters in the bottom of the feet and all of those crazy thrusters around back. That is because one of the staples of this particular Ver anime line are these little things right here, which are vernier booster effect parts. So basically you just stick this into the vernier and then you've got a little bit of a thruster flame coming out, which is something I always wished was available or compatible with Bandai's Gunpla because it's such a cool effect. Now we're going to be using it on these around back. So this just pops on in like so. And what you get is a thruster effect just like so. But these can be attached on anywhere. As you can see, these ones are a bit of an angle, but there are other ones available which are not angled. They're just kind of straight. They come with every single one of these. I nearly called it a kit figures. So the more of these you have, the more little thrusters. So if there is one thing that the Zephyranthus right here full burner has in plentitude, it's thrusters. And that means we have even more of these. Now these, I'm not sure if they're unique to this particular figure, but they're definitely the first, well, that I've seen of them so far. And these are specifically for using with these very large thrusters around back. Now these plug in in the exact same sort of way and they look a little something like that right there. Now this is one of those figures that every time it's like, but wait, there's more because there is more options for using with these. This is just the standard thruster effect. We also have a little section, this clear section right here, which just enhances this even further to make it look like it's even going faster. So basically you just pop the effect we had in there into this kind of cup shaped vigorous extender and then just pop it back into the vernier like so so it just looks like it's blasting even more by the way i almost forgot to mention you can rotate these the whole way around for the zephyranthus pulling this screeching stop 
So lastly in here we've got these huge massive explosive effect parts which are for using in combination once again with the ones we just saw. These aren't actually for using on the boosters we just saw though. These are for using on the ones a little further down at the bottom of the backpack. So you attach these on just like you would have seen with any of these supplementary blast thruster effects and it all attaches on just like so and in the end this is what I got with the Robot Spirits Gundam GP-01FB with all of the thrusters attached and this looks ridiculous. This really is what makes the Ver anime line so good. All of those thrusters effects, all of the beam effects, and we have that sword clashing effect that I want to use with the GP-02. So let's get it. Somehow through all of that I managed to forget to put on the antenna. Come separate in the box and it pops on just like that and anyway I lie it wasn't just like that it took me a solid two minutes and I used a or had to use a needle nose pliers to get it on I just cut it out anyway moving on to the next one which is the Gundam GP-02A now it's at this point I realized that I had planned to do this video when I got the Gundam GP-00 Blossom but I realized I haven't done that yet so it's not all the Gundams I want. maybe I can do one with the Blossom and the standard GP-01 sometime in the future but anyway this is the GP-02 one of the most ridiculous Gundams of all time because it's literally armed with a nuclear missile. So there is that inner packaging and just like we would have seen before this is absolutely packed with hands, weapons, different parts of weapons. There doesn't seem to be as many effects in here as with the GP01 but there is a lot of nice bulk. Let's get it out. So this right here is absolutely dripping with Stardust Memory Flare. This, at least from what I can see right here, seems to be a little bit more adherent to the actual original art, the original design. The grey looks fantastic and this thing looks bulky as all hell, but the main question is just how big is it? So it's size comparison time. So first off, the universal size comparison, there it is side by side with a high grade Gundam. Now, I just realized that because I got this guy all set up on the stand, I can't actually size comparison it exactly, but it seems to be in and around the same size. I always thought the GP-02 was a much bigger unit. As for a bit of a like with like comparison, there it is side by side with a Ver anime, and that is the Ground Gundam, so the Ground Gundam Ver anime. So yeah, according to the Gundam Wiki, it is 18.5 meters to the head, so it is the exact same size as the GP-01. I always thought it was a little bit bigger, but I guess it's just the bulk of the legs and the shoulders that make it, or give it, that impression. Once again, this does look absolutely incredible, with a mix of detail molded in the actual plastic colors, as well as detail painted on. We do have a couple of decals, being the 02 up on the shoulder, as well as around back in the backpack. This doesn't have any kind of pan lining yet again, just like we see with these figures all the time. I guess you could do that yourself if you're feeling wild. And we do have a lot of detail in underneath these giant boosters with tons of thrusters all over the place. These are meant to be anime accurate and it seems like that is the case. Up at the head we've got some nice Vulcans either side of the head, those kind of screw shaped segments either side of its jaw. There is just so much detail all over this. It is absolutely perfect and not a flaw or a scuff to be seen anywhere. There are some fairly large seam lines however which seems to be a staple for this particular line of figures in the sides of the legs and quite noticeably in the rear of the forearms but once again that is around back so that's not so bad. Jumping into that full 360 spin now and even ignoring those big binders on the shoulders the GP-02 is one massive chunk of a Gundam. It's all feet and all torso. It is absolutely huge and the Binders up top, these have a lot going on inside of them. At first I thought they looked a little bit like big old block pieces, but it looks like we're going to be able to do a whole lot of these when it comes to the articulation and posing, which we might as well get into right now. So just like with the GP-01FB, this is quite rock solid out of box. Now I did find with the GP-01 that eventually it got a little bit loose in some aspects, like the upper arm rotation when it was holding onto the shield. So these may loosen up a little bit more than what they're like right out of box here, even though I'm pretty sure this one right here is pretty old. Anyway, posing. So getting this into the usual pose, and I'm not sure if just because this is a little bulkier, it feels a little bit more impressive than what we saw with the GP-01, but I feel a little bit more impressed. Mainly because I feel like the toe could kick up a little bit here, and the pivot on the ankle felt a little bit nicer. There's a very large ball joint in there that did allow for that. We've got the little kind of gimmick in the torso here, which allows the arm to come forward, but 
on the whole, it is quite good. One thing that kind of annoys me a little bit is the fact that the ab crunch is really good, but it feels a little weak and he flops back ever so often. Of course, the minute I mention it, it doesn't happen though. But anyway, what can I say for a bulky boy? That's pretty damn good. I was about to jump right into the accessories there, but I would have been missing one of the most impressive aspects about this. This is the binder segments up here, which can turn outwards just like so, with the boosters pointing down the way. That is such a cool gimmick. Those segments actually move with the upper parts like so. We also have this bits, this bits, these bits around here that can be moved around as well. So if you can say one thing about the GPO2 is that it's got a lot when it comes to thrusters. But anyway, those accessories. So inside the box, we do get quite a few things. The shield here being the most impressive, well, aspect, I guess, because it is one big old chunk. But once again, just like before, I am going to be just working on a bit of a loadout. So I won't be going through all the hands, but we do have eight alternate ones, including the two attached for 10. While taking a look through the accessories in the manual, I noticed that we do have a dropping mechanism in the crotch here, which gives you an even better ab crunch. So again, super impressive. So first up in here, we've got this absolutely mighty shield. Around back, we do have a big old handle and a little bit of a segment. Now this segment right here can open up just like so in order to store the launcher. How absolutely cool is that? And then it all just closes up over it for storage. So this is a shield right here that doesn't have a forearm attachment, which is quite rare when it comes to Gundams. That does mean, it, I'm not sure if this will cause some kind of issues in the future with kind of balance, but we will find out. It just slots on into the hand just like so, holds on well so far, and having no issues thus far, but we will see. So grabbing yet another simple stand, these are something you will not regret stocking up on. They're really, really, really good and totally worth the three or four euro they end up working out to be. Four euro, I think, each. And when these kits notoriously do not include a stand, it's good to have some squirreled away for when you need them. So that just pops on in there. And I will admit this is a bulky, bulky boy, so it is actually struggling with him a little more than I thought it would. But it does keep him off the ground. So next up in here, we've got the second half of the Atomic Bazooka, which is this segment right here. This is the back end of it. We have a little attachment point here, which is a simple two point joint that attaches into the rear of the shoulder right here. And this is where this hangs out. Now, if you do want to build the Atomic Bazooka, I'm just going to mention this in passing because I'm only loading this out for, well, popping up on the shelf. But you just, you just whip out the front segment of the Bazooka from the shield just like so, which is nice. This works so well, and then it plugs on in like so, and there you've got your full Atomic Bazooka. Pop that into the hand, and it's ready for posing. Lots of nice articulation here, so you'll get the poses that you want. The sad aspect about it is, there is no shooting effect in here. The manual actually tells you to go out and buy a Zaku. The, uh... Robot Dimashi Ver Anime Zaku if you want this missile effect. So that is a little bit on the lame side and another reason why I won't be using the bazooka in this particular display. So what I'm going to be opting for is the beam saber. We've got the same little kind of array of beams in here that we saw with the GP01 except they're in green. Curved, the two smaller ones. This big one was, well, in the other manual set was for using in the rifle. So I guess you can use it on the beam saber too if you want because this does not have a beam rifle. And we do have two thruster effects. This thing right here is a rack for storing the hands when they're not in use. Oh, and all these kits come with a spare V-fin. That is a power move by Bandai to machinations that Bandai spirits with the model kits need to do. So when it comes to the beam sabers on the GPO2 right here, these do store in the side skirting armor, so you just pull them out like so. There are multiple holding hands in here. We've got the standard ones which were attached already, which hold the weapons at like a 90 degree angle to the forearm. Or we have some that are a little bit at an extended angle for slashing and that's what I'm going to go with. Swapping the hands is a little tight at first, but not impossible. Popping the beam saber into the hand, it pops in from the bottom end because it's got a thick end, which is quite interesting, unusual. And I'm going to go with the standard beam effect in here, which once again is in green and nice, awesome atomic green. So the last step in here, we've got a couple of thruster effects. Once again, these are the basic type. 
Unlike the ones we saw with the GPO-1, these are not at a bit of an angle. These are actually straight out when it comes to their attachment points. So there is only the two, even though we've got tons of verniers on this thing. It's actually adorned, completely covered in verniers, and you just get the two little piddly vernier effect parts. So when you actually do attach these on, they look okay, but it kind of looks like it's just kind of cruising around or flying around on emergency power. It would be nice to see this absolutely lighting the place up with tons of effects, but I suppose you can actually buy those separately if you want to. So now it is finally about time to try out that beam saber clashing effect. Now, I'm gonna try and do this. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna go about this without knocking them both over and failing and... But in the end, I got it all figured out and sorted, and this looks so, so cool. This has been done so well. One of the greatest aspects about the Ver anime line is the effect parts, and these just look so, so cool. Just the GPO2 and the GPO1 FB just ramming together, beam, saber, clash, and that big crackling effect of where they're hitting each other. That's so cool. Now, this is essentially meant to be the... GPO-1, the standard version for this particular pose, but the effect does come with the GPO-1 FB as well. And I will also mention there is a sold separately effect part kit. So, well not kit, but like box of parts for using with these figures. So it does mean you get more thruster effect parts for using with your GPO-2. And there is some really cool beam saber effect parts as well, like this one right here, which looks like it's almost crackling off some evil energy. I'm gonna have to add this to the shopping list with the GPO-1 and the stamen. And the Blossom. This line is too good. And then I ran out of time. So I won't actually be taking a look at this one today. The Gundam GPO 4G Gerber. I'll actually hold on to this for another one. I do want to grab some of the other ones out there. I know there is the Gerber Tetra as well as the Gerber Tetra Custom. As well as the Blossom which is what I actually meant to get for this review. So I will actually get those sometime in the future. These are absolutely kick ass figures. I recommend trying one. If you've ever seen one from an anime that you want or that you like, I say grab it. These are so, so good. Once again, I got them through Baie. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including 10 Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, Orgy95061, 10 Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.